welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church. It's Sunday morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord on this Mother's Day 2023. want to wish every mother that is here with us a happy Mother's Day. And I pray that God continue to bless you richly this day. Please go ahead and stand with me. 377, he lives. 377 will be our opening hymn. He, he lives. Let's sing it out. 377.
Karen, the adult Sunday school class, will continue with our books of the Bible. We go from Genesis all the way to Revelations, learning our books of the Bible. So here we go. And our boys, our, our adult Sunday school class, books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Job, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and the Revelation. Amen. So let's continue on with our, our Bible verse for those who show a scripture memory program. It's taken from 1 Corinthians 6.18. 1 Corinthians 6.18. I'll have us repeat after me twice, and then we'll all say it together. All right? So here we go. 1 Corinthians 6.18. 1 Corinthians 6.18. Flee fornication. Every man, that, every sin that a man doeth, is without the body. But he that committed fornication, sinned against his own body. First Corinthians six eighteen. One more time after me. First Corinthians six eighteen. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. 1 Corinthians 6.18 All together, 1 Corinthians 6.18 Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Do we have someone? Uh, Monique? There's no and, but you missed the but. So, close. But he that committed for, yeah, sinned against his own body, right? That was a but. Okay. Guamote? Amen. Mima? Against his own body. You said to his own body. That one word, against, but very, very close. Amen. Let's continue to study. We'll come back to that tonight. Make sure those of us in the scripture program have our journals filled out. At this time, I'll ask if our ushers can make their way forward, and we'll uh, have Brother Murray go ahead and bless the Sunday school offering at this time.
at this time will remember those that have left home and have answered the call to go abroad to preach the gospel. So I'll ask Brother Cornelius, can you pray for the missionaries at this time? pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, um, we do thank you <clears throat> for waking us up this morning. Lord, I pray for the preachers in Chicago. Lord, I pray for um, preachers, Lord, to just um, fulfill the calling, Lord, to preach right here in Chicago, Lord, our home city, Lord, our wicked city, or wicked people, or people that don't know you. Lord, this world doesn't know you. <clears throat> and the more we go into the years, farther we are from you. Lord, I pray for more preachers that are trying to win souls, Lord, so that they know where they're going after death. Lord, I pray for more preachers in Chicago. Lord, that are strong. Lord, they know that they are powerless without you, Lord. They know where their power comes from. Lord, I pray for more preachers, Lord, that depend on you, Lord, um, many times when things don't go their way or they just die down, they die to this world, they surrender. Lord, I pray for preachers in Chicago that just stand up for you, stand up for the gospel, or because they know that there is no other gospel or but the true gospel that you sent your son down for to die. He was buried and resurrected. Lord, I pray for more preachers that just love you, Lord, and have a pure heart. Lord, I pray for preachers that are not doing this because of the accolades of men or not to be looked upon, or to simply be used for you, or they want to bring glory to your name. Lord, I pray that you would just help us, Lord, be soul winners for you. Help us, Lord, to honor you and glorify you in everything we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, I've got uh, two things before we get into our lesson this morning. The first one is when we're praying for our missionaries. Uh, we've had lots of missionaries over the years, and we've met a lot of people going different places. But it's important that when we pray for missionaries that we especially pray for the missionaries that we support. In other words, we send money every single month to certain missionaries that we support as a church. Um, and we want to pray for all missionaries as the Lord brings them to mind, but particularly pray for the missionaries that we have a vested interest in uh, those fields. And I want you to remember that. So I wanted to rehearse who those missionaries are in case you did not know. Um, who knows our missionaries? If you know one that we currently support, Ashan. Uh, 
Pastor Zdarsky, that's our newest missionary. Um, and he is preparing to go to the country of Poland. So he's raising support that he's going to go to Poland, take a year, learn the Polish language, and then start. Um, he'll be evangelizing the law as soon as he gets there, but he won't be able to do it as effectively until he learns the language. So pray for the Zdarskys. We send them <clears throat> a, a, a portion of our missions dollars every, every single month. And uh, who else? Monique. The Marzooks, we pray for them. We don't currently support them. I would like to take them on. Um, and so that's someone that we can consider for missionary support. Certainly think he's worthy of it. We don't currently support him. Julian. Brother Cloud. Brother Cloud in Nepal gets support from us each month. Uh, we support each missionary at $100 a month right now. Um, I, in the future, I'd like to see that raised. I would rather raise the support of the existing missionaries than take on gobs of new missionaries. I think that would be more effective. Um, but, of course, Brother Cloud, Yolanda, Brother Hardecker in the Philippines. We support them on a monthly basis, doing a good work for the Lord there. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Brother Blanco, they're in Belize City in Central America. We support them on a monthly basis. Anybody know any others? Mike. The Kims. We support them uh, to China um, on a monthly basis as well. Any others? Jehovah Jireh. Uh, that is a ministry that raises money to give large grants to churches that are trying to get their first building, that are trying to either purchase or renovate their first building. And they only accept uh, independent fundamental Baptist churches that use the King James Version of the Bible. And when we got this building, they gave us a check for $50,000. And so right away, we took them on for support, and they're looking to raise those grants because of inflation, because the cost of materials has gone through the roof, they are looking to raise those grants to $60,000 and eventually $70,000. And again, they come with no strings attached. All they ask is that the monies be used uh, for the purpose that it was given, and that is to either purchase or renovate a church's first building. We send them support on a monthly basis. Any others? Mike. Nope, their church is self-supporting, independent, and autonomous. But there is one more that we didn't list. <clears throat> nope. We don't currently support any home missions, which is another burden that I have that we get involved in church planning in America. And uh, really, I think that they'll start with us planning our first church. In a couple of years, I'm very excited about God somehow answering that request. Sean, Brother Nitin Ingle, missionary to India, India. And so let's uh, pray for all the missionaries as the Lord brings them to mind, but specifically pray for the missionaries that we are partnering with, partnering with in these different parts of the world. And then the second thing I wanted to mention to you is the um, way we're recording promised visitors for Anniversary Sunday. So in the annex, there will be two sets of things for you to look at. The first will be the men's versus the women's contest for the Compel Award. There are directions uh, for what to do when you look at those sheets. And then the other one, which isn't posted yet, it'll be posted by this time next Sunday, is for the Sunday school contest. Uh, each Sunday school class is working to bring out visitors for the big day, and I wanna win. And so I'm saying, as the Sunday school teacher for the adults, let's do our job uh, to get out as many visitors as we can for the big day, and let's clobber all the other Sunday school classes. And so everyone you invite and bring out counts and then we are competing against the other classes, and then we're also competing against uh, men versus the women, and we're praying. 
not just competing, we are praying. There'll be cottage prayer meetings uh, for our 15th anniversary Sunday. What's a cottage prayer meeting? It's when we go to somebody's house uh, during the week and pray for the special meeting. And so be on the lookout for those posted. Take your Bible and go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. I want to wish all of you mothers a very happy Mother's Day. And um, of course, we men will never know what it's like to be a mother, but I, I can tell you two things uh, from the bottom of my heart. I can tell you two things. Number one, I'm thankful for the mother that God gave me. And um, secondly, I'm thankful for the mother that is raising my children. And then thirdly, I'm thankful for all of the mothers uh, in this room, all of the mothers represented by our church, uh, you ladies that have brought children into a dangerous and fearful world and uh, did your best to raise them to be good members of our society. And of course, we want to go further and raise our children to be, uh, to come to know the Lord and to serve him with their lives. And so I commend all of the mothers with us today. Genesis chapter 37, Genesis chapter 37. In our Sunday school class today, I'd like to teach a lesson entitled, The Job of a Soul Winner. The Job of a Soul Winner. In other words, what kind of a soul winner are you when it comes to reaching other people with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ? What kind of a soul winner are you? A secondary title for this lesson would simply be, are you a Reuben? Are you a Reuben? And when I say, are you a Reuben? When I say Reuben, I'm not talking about a Reuben sandwich, okay? I'm talking about a character in the Bible that wanted to save somebody. And I want you to look at Genesis chapter 37. And as you're turning, I want to remind you that the job of a soul winner is to deliver people out of the hands of the devil. To rescue them from Satan. And God uses a soul winner to accomplish that. How good are we at spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are we as good at spreading the gospel as Coca-Cola is at spreading their products? 97% of the world has heard of Coca-Cola. That's a lot of the world. 72% of the world has seen a can of Coca-Cola. 51% of the people in the world have tasted a can of Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola has only been around for about 120 years. Yet, they've done that well at advertising their product. If God had given the task of evangelizing the world to Coca-Cola, would they be doing a better job than the churches of Jesus Christ? Ask yourself that question. Look with me at Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. Scripture and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So here's a 17-year-old young man. Uh, and he is out there with his brothers, and he sees that they're doing wrong. And so what does he do? He brings that report back to dad. He tells on the brothers. Verse number three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. How many of you are familiar with the story of Joseph and the coat of many colors? Okay, that's what we're looking at right here. Verse number four. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, 
and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. So they already didn't like Joseph. And to make matters worse, he's having visions uh, that will be fulfilled in the future, showing how his brethren are going to bow down before him. Verse number 9, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Okay, so in that scenario, uh, the son would be the father, the moon would be the mother, and in verse number 9, those 11 stars would be the other brothers. And, and Jacob uh, understood what, what his son was, was talking about here. Verse number 11, and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, here am I. Let's make sure our phones are all turned off. Look at verse number 14, Genesis 37, 14. And he, said un, and he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. So the brothers had had enough. They said, Here comes Joseph. We're going to kill him. We're going to slay him. We're going to do him in. Verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him. And we will see, we shall see what will become of his dreams. Now here's the lesson. Look at verse 21. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. That's a soul winner. A soul winner sees that someone's in trouble, that someone is about to be destroyed. And a soul winner says, no, a soul winner intervenes and does something about the matter. Verse 22, and Reuben said unto them, shed no blood. But cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him. Now why did Reuben do that? That he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. Let's, don't, don't kill him. Let's just throw him into the pit. And in Reuben's mind, I'll just come back later and, and, and fetch him out of the pit and, and bring him to his father again. God's plan was for Joseph to be mistreated. I'm not saying it was pleasant, but it was God's plan. God had to get Joseph to Egypt so that the whole nation in its infancy could be spared. He was 17 years old. I know it's Mother's Day, but Joseph's mother was dead. He had potential. 
Joseph in the Bible is a type of Jesus Christ. This is Sunday school. I'd like a little bit of interaction. Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ. Does anyone know how? A couple ways. Marvin. That's right. That's right. Now we know Joseph was a sinner, but none of his sins are recorded for us. That makes him a, 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 a real symbolic image of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Then there was one more. Monique. Sacrifice? Okay. Uh, maybe there's three. She just gave us another one. All right. Amen. All right. Yolanda. His dreams? Um, so Monique's is, is good. It's not perfect because Joseph didn't die, but they surely wanted to kill him. Okay? Yes. There's four. Keep them coming. You teach the class today. Makes my job real easy. Ashawn. <laughs> Okay. Those are all good. Those are all good. The ones I have down is the, the one that Marvin mentioned. We don't read of any sin on Joseph, but here's a big one. Here's a big one. How he's like Jesus. Steve thinks he knows it. Here it is. Let's hear it. You're on the spot. Son of promise. Here we go. Here it is. He was loved of his father and hated by his brethren. He was loved of his father and hated by his brethren. Others that were closest to him were against him. Learn that lesson. Now, only one brother had a level head about this whole thing. And that was Reuben in verse number 21. The Bible says, and Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Some things about Reuben and about our witnessing, our soul winning. Are you a Reuben? We'll pray and we'll ask God to give us a lesson. Heavenly Father, would you teach us today that which you want us to know? Would you fill me with the Holy Spirit of God that I could say what you once said? Lord, we believe that souls are at stake. And I pray that you'd let this soul winning lesson not fall on deaf ears. Lord, as long as hell is hot, we need to be winning souls. And I pray that you'd help us to consider Reuben today from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Some things here, I'd like you to write them down. If at all possible, capture these things. Number one, the person. The person. Well, we know who the person was. The person was Reuben. The Bible says in verse number 21, and Reuben heard it. A Reuben wants to deliver those that are in trouble. A Reuben has a heart for those that are in distress. We need more and better Reubens. A godly pastor is a Reuben. A godly Sunday school teacher is a Reuben, a bus captain trying to build a route and putting in the prayer and time that it takes to do it, is a Reuben, a godly bus worker, is a Reuben, a church member that passes out tracts and witnesses to others about the Lord Jesus Christ, is a Reuben, and a Reuben, and, and, and God puts it in our heart, he's commanded it, okay, He's commanded it, but he also puts it in our heart to be a Reuben. And I hope I never, ever, ever become the type of Christian that doesn't have a heart to deliver others that are on their way to hell. By God's grace, I want to be a Reuben. Secondly, I want you to notice about the person, the hands, in verse number 21. We're still looking at the person. The hands in verse 21, if you'll look there at verse 21, you'll see whose hands are mentioned. The hands were Joseph's own brothers. Joseph's own brothers. Reuben is fighting his own brothers to deliver 
Joseph. Many times you will have to fight other people that are close to you to try to reach and grab some of them that are in trouble. Our unsaved relatives don't understand what they're doing when they oppose the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But a Reuben is perceptive enough to know, hey, they're fighting against the gospel even though they're my own kin. You see, your family members don't understand hell. Your family members don't understand eternity in the lake of fire. But as a Reuben, you should. And you should be willing to deliver those that you can out of their hands. Third, I want you to see that Reuben heard it. Look at verse number 21. The Bible says in verse number 21, and Reuben heard it. What did he hear according to verse number 21? You have to look at it in context in order to get it. What did he hear, Yolanda? Yeah, Reuben heard it. He had his senses tuned to their evil. Who are you hearing? Who are you sensing is in eternal jeopardy of stepping out into eternity and landing in the lake of fire? The devil is wreaking havoc on your bus route. Have you heard it? The devil is wreaking havoc in your family. Have you heard it? Multitudes up and down the streets of Chicago. Is there anyone to be a Reuben and to hear their cry? People are hurting today. I was talking to a neighbor that I wasn't very acquainted with this week. And he had been living on my block for four years. And he was telling me a little bit of his story and told me that his wife had died two years previous. I remember her when they moved in and when he told me about her death it smote my heart in conviction you hear me I said oh God I've got to hear it better than I ever have before Reuben heard it we've looked at his person the person is Reuben secondly I want you to see the plea the plea look at verse number 21 and Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, here's the plea, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him. Reuben gets into begging mode right now. Reuben begs his brothers not to kill Joseph. He's willing to swallow his pride if that means to save a life. He's begging, he's pleading. Can I ask you, who are you pleading with concerning their soul? Who are you begging to examine the claims of Jesus Christ? Who are you begging to come out on Anniversary Sunday and to hear Pastor Don Whitaker preach the gospel? Who are you pleading with on your block? Who are you begging? Who are you pleading for before the throne of God in prayer? Oh God, I, I want to see this person saved. Oh, God, I want to see this person one to you. When we have the cottage prayer meetings, who are you going to plead for? Reuben was a pleader, a pleader. Secondly, we see the plan. Thirdly, I'm sorry, we see the plan. The plan. Look at verse number 22. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, and here's the plan, that he might rid him out of their hands. You know what I like about Reuben? He had a plan. You know what else I like about Reuben? His plan showed that he was sincere. He had a good plan that he was sure would deliver Joseph out of their hands. The lost need to see our sincerity. I don't believe that they'll listen to the gospel with as open a heart as they could and should if they don't see that we're sincere, if they don't see that we care. Joseph here was about to be destroyed, and Reuben said, I've got a plan, and the plan showed that he had the sincerity of wanting to deliver him out of their hands. We need to devise a plan for our anniversary Sunday. 
we have devised a 10,000 door plan for our door knocking for the rest of this year. Knocked on over 200 doors yesterday. We need to have a plan, a plan in place, just like Reuben. And when we knock on those doors, when we, when we encounter those people, may they see our sincerity. May we bathe every gospel effort in sincerity. We need to have a plan. Reuben was a soul winner. He had a plan. Fourth, I want you to see the purpose. The purpose. Verse number 22. Let's look at the scripture. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands. And this was the purpose, to deliver him to his father again. Don't you understand that we need to find the lost and deliver them to their father again? They are his by creation, but spiritually they are children of the devil if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, John 1, 12, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And until they come to Jesus, they are, John 8, 44, children of the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Where are the soul winners who want to deliver the lost? To the father. Do you realize that you have been given a ministry? Every say person in this room to you has been committed the ministry of reconciliation, the Bible calls it in the book of 1 Corinthians. That is the ministry of reconciling an unholy man to a holy God. Are there any Rubens in the house today? David Brainerd said this as a missionary. He said, I care not where I go or how I live or what I endure so that I may save souls. When I sleep, I dream of them. When I wake, they are first in my thoughts. Oh, what a purpose to deliver them to their father again. And then number five, I want you to see the procrastination. The procrastination. Let's check our phones. Make sure they're powered off. Number five, the procrastination. Look at verse number 29. I want to see if anybody in here, I want your feedback. Good. Okay. I want you to see the procrastination. I want to see if you can find it, though. I'm not going to tell you what it is. <clears throat> The procrastination. Verse number 29. The Bible says, And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? Do you see the procrastination there? Everything so far with Reuben has been good. But where do we see his procrastination here in the Bible? Does everyone know what that word procrastination means? That's a long word that means just not getting around to doing what you're supposed to do. Okay, where do we see the procrastination in verses 29 and 30? Now I got the main guys raising their hands, the ones that answer all the time. I wanna see if I can get some other people to raise their hands. Where do we see the procrastination? Mr. Arnold. He took too long to come back. He took too long to come back. And so Reuben is to be commended for his motive, but his method was all wrong. He waited too long. He waited when he should have acted. Now stay with me. There was a one-legged school teacher from Scotland that presented himself to J. Hudson Taylor, the famous missionary to China, this one-legged school teacher said, I want to be a missionary to China with you. Taylor asked, with only one leg, 
why do you want to go be a missionary? And his answer was, I do not see those with two legs going. I'll try to win that soul, Pastor Lewis, tomorrow. I'll try to reach that one that's without Christ at some point. We're all guilty of it. Don't look at me like you're all holier than thou. We're all guilty of it. And his remorse is seen in verse number 29 in that he tore his clothes because he knew he had waited too long. Look at that remorse. Listen, our anniversary Sunday is coming up. The gospel is available to them only while they're breathing and can understand. Don't wait too long to reach them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Give them the gospel. Get them out to Anniversary Sunday. Be a Reuben. We know that this was God's plan for Joseph to be sold into Egypt, but Reuben didn't know that. He should have done better. He should have done better. We have the Bible to teach us. We can learn from Reuben. Joseph teaches us As a son in trouble, he teaches us what our unsaved friends and relatives are like in the pit. Reuben teaches us how to act, but he did not go far enough. We need Reubens, but we need Reubens who will act while there's time. We've got about 10 minutes before the morning service. Let's ask God's blessing on the morning service to come. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time in your word. Give us Rubens who want to act swiftly to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, put that within the hearts of the people at Cornerstone. The Cornerstone Baptist Church would be a soul winning church, bringing others to Jesus. Help us for Jesus' sake. Amen.